spooky, scary skeletons send shivers down your spine. Happy spooky season, everyone. Hope Father Halloween has brought you loads of spiders and bastards this year. You know who loves Halloween? Nerds. Big old bloody nerds. Cracking open their favorite slasher franchise box sets, dressing themselves up as xenomorphs and spraying cobwebs in a can all over the place like an overstimulated Spider-Man. Tis the season. My favorite thing to do this time of year is gather together a group of friends, lower the lights, whack on a scary movie soundtrack, and play an atmospheric horror-themed board game. It's the best time, and boy, do we have some creepy crawlers for you. Full disclosure, for most lists for NRB, I try to feature mostly games we haven't covered before, but for this one, I'm going to be covering a few ones that we have. It can't be helped because some of these are absolute essentials for your spooky time selection. I'm Adam from No Rolls Bard, and here are our picks for the perfect 10 horror games to play at Halloween. Let us know what games you'll be playing this season in the comments. Why don't you like and share this video around if you enjoyed it. And while you're here, make sure you subscribe. Otherwise, I'll get ya. Number 10, Gloom. Starting with a nifty little card game that's half take that mean em up and half storytelling, each player controls a number of members of a different family, straight out of the Adams Family Rolodex or the Edward Gorey Family Tree. Gothic circus freaks, f you, Mr. Giggles. Gothic country folk, spooky inventions, scary twins, because of course there are scary twins. The gang's all here. The cards are printed on clear plastic, allowing for a wonderful little mechanic where people can change a character's stats by placing another clear card on top. See, in order to win, you want to have the most negative points. To get negative points, you want your own family members to be very, very sad. Maybe Cousin Mordecai has been distressed by dysentery. Adorable. Once a character has a lot of negative points, players can lock those points in by giving their family member a terrible end. Oh no, Mr. Giggles was baked into a pie. Don't eat that. And the best part is the game encourages you to narrate the unfortunate events of your family. And this creates a collection of grim tales detailing woeful accidents, brutal deaths, and the occasional moment where another player can screw you over by playing a happy card on one of your family. Hey, look, cousin Mordecai's dysentery fertilized the crops, saving the harvest. And now he's toast of the town. I can't believe you've done this. A tiny, beautiful little game of gruesome fortune, especially good if you're on the go. Number nine, Horrified. It's no secret that we at No Rolls Bard like Horrified. Oh boy, do we like Horrified. It's a fantastically simple and gorgeously produced box of universal horrors, featuring monsters that everyone knows, Bitey Steve, Old Bandage and his little brother Fancy Bandage, and the big dog to name but a few, whilst also having rules simple enough for the whole family to get on booed. Monsters are terrorizing the town. Each monster has a different mini game to defeat them. Players work together pandemic style to move around the map, grab items, try to solve the mini games and protect the innocent townsfolk, all before the undateables here turn your skin into a fancy wedding arch for their big day. It plays in an hour, it's easy to teach, easier than Pandemic, and it looks fancy to boot. If you're a fan of classic horror and fun, Horrified is a wonderful shout for fearsome family frolics, which goes double for fans of American myths and legends, as the sequel game has just come out, Horrified American Monsters, featuring cryptids like Bigfoot, the Chupacabra, and Mothman. Oh, I, I want it. I want it bad. Number eight, Tragedy Looper. Gloom and Horrified very much place an emphasis on fun over fear. Well, how about one that's actually a straight horror game full of very bad things happening to good people. The game plays out like Groundhog Day meets Death Note with slightly fewer demonic Apple enthusiasts. It's a series of days where bad stuff might happen, and if certain conditions are met, the loop will end, it resets to the start, and the days will start to play out again. In Tragedy Looper, one player is the mastermind running the scenario for the game, and they're working against the other players. Each scenario has a bunch of elements in it, plots and subplots, which tells you which characters are in it, which secret roles those characters have, what terrible misfortunes happen on which day, and crucially, what has to happen for the rest of the players to fail that loop. The rest of the players know nothing and slowly but surely, probably by dying and failing a lot, have to work out why their loop is failing, what specific plots and subplots are in play, and crucially, how they can prevent any more failures before their finite number of loops 
runs out. Maybe they realize, okay, we have to protect this office worker before he's hunted down by a serial killer. Maybe to prevent the loop from failing, they have to prevent a schoolboy's suicide. There is some grim stuff in this game, for sure, but it is a heady, tense and brutal deduction game where if you're smart, you can read the clues and access your mind palace. You can just about race across town to pull your friend from a burning bonfire and show fate itself the bird. Number seven, Last Night on Earth. Ah, the old Halloween staple, the zombie. A perfect antagonist for video and board games alike, seeing as they're easy to predict, only dangerous in numbers, and you can slaughter them in hordes without worrying if your lack of empathy for doing so is a reason to alert the council. Probably the most popular zombie games are Dead of Winter, which is great and we've covered before for Zombicide, which is a great choice if you like spending 80 quid on the game that's fine. Gonna annoy some Zombicide fans there. I'm kidding, like what you like. But let's talk about a new game, Last Night on Earth. As you can tell from the box art, this is a pulpy, cinematic style game for movie fans and zombie heads alike. In the game, some of you control heroes trying to collect certain items, maybe escape, maybe just last a certain amount of rounds. And in a rarity for zombie games, some of you control the shambling SOBs. Yes, some lucky players get to control the horde, can kill the heroes of other players and turn them into zombies to attack their own. It is a fairly accessible game. Roll dice to move around the board, forage for items, collect weapons, take the fight to some moldy pricks, then back to the Winchester for a cold pint and wait for all of this to blow over. Both sides feel fairly balanced and it is very fun to munch on a friend. Number six, One Night Ultimate Werewolf. What's all Hallow's Eve without a little bit of lying? The holiday's built on tall tales after all, the tallest of which being, I'm not evil, look over there, munch munch crunch crunch. There are plenty of spooky, demonic and murder themed social deduction games. Heck, if the game was out now, our number one on this list and a layup would be blood on the clock tower, but it isn't, so let's go with this classic. One Night Ultimate Werewolf, condensing the sprawling length of the game Werewolf into a super addictive 10 minutes. Every player gets a token on it with a roll. Get rid of the villagers, get rid of the boring villagers. Most are townsfolk, some are werewolves, and everyone closes their eyes, then everyone's character's power activates at some point during that night, messing with the town in a major way. Roles get swapped, people's roles get peeked at, things change so much that when you wake up, you've got five minutes to unravel the knot of everyone's information, work out who the wolves are, and hang one of them in the town square. It is a truly wonderful, hilarious mess, with loads of expansions to add crazier and crazier powers. If you're looking for a fun, accessible, and party-friendly blast of betrayal, one night is your sugar fix. Number five, Dread. If you're talking about games that encourage immersion and atmosphere, what's more compelling in that regard than a tabletop role-playing game? Crafting your very own horror movie with a bunch of pals and a sadistic and bloodthirsty DM in the unrelated picture of Tom. We've already covered games like Call of Cthulhu or the superbly dark and creepy Ten Candles, but one we haven't yet featured on the channel is Dread, a very silly system indeed, which combines a horror movie with a Jenga tower. You heard me right. And you know what? It works. It's scary. Genuinely biting your knuckles, terrifying. It's also super simple. You're in a horror movie, you make one up. Go nuts. Every time your character does something challenging, the DM tells you to pull blocks from the tower and stack them on top. One block for something simple, multiple blocks for something really hard, and you all know how Jenga can end. If you cause the tower to fall, your character either dies right then and there in a glorious, grisly defeat, or they become marked for death and can be killed off whenever the DM chooses. Nasty, cruel DM, vengeful, horrible, sexy Tom. It's equal parts silly to scary. It can't be underestimated just how nerve wracking it is when your character's being chased through a forest. You trip and suddenly to see if you get up before being hacked to bits, you have to pry a stubborn block from an incredibly wobbly tower of doom. Number four, Betrayal at House on the Hill, a horror movie in a box in all the best and occasionally worst ways. But damn it, like most horror, Betrayal's flaws are half the fun. Got a real personal affection for this game in which players take the role of various characters exploring a Scooby-Doo quality haunted mansion, encountering g, -g, g ghosts and other varieties of both heebies and jeebies. The players start off as a team, exploring the house, adding rooms to it as they go. So every game, the layout of the manor will be different, trying to find useful items for later, buff up their stats, speed, might, knowledge, and sanity, survive spooky events 
events, all while avoiding the haunt. But eventually, as inevitable as destiny, taxes, and most importantly, death, the haunt arrives all the same. The game shifts with one of the players most likely becoming evil and one of the 50 scenarios in the base game will start with the evil player most likely taking control of a gloriously tropey movie monster, a Frankenstein, a clown, a terrifyingly powerful evil plant, while the rest of the players must now team up to take on their new antagonist by whatever means the new scenario demands. It's a lumpy game. Not all haunts are created equal, and by sod's law, the least experienced player is almost guaranteed to become evil with a bunch of new rules to learn, but when it works, there are few spooky games that match Betrayal's white knuckle adrenaline. It might be a messy monster, but it's my monster. Number three, Fury of Dracula. It's one of our greatest fears as a species, the fear of the dark, or more specifically, what's hiding in the dark, unknown and unseen, prickles of terror dancing on your neck as you wait to be attacked by something you cannot see. Hidden movement games are bloody, brillig Halloween games, and maybe best suited for Halloween is Fury of Dracula. The game takes place on a map of Europe, most players taking the roles of hunters, one player becoming Mr. The Impaler. He vaunts to suck your blood, which is bad, because we don't know where he f is. Dracula will be moving invisibly around the map, flapping from hideout to hideout like the cheeky bat he is, seeding his path through the continent with encounter cards that might spring a terrible trap for the hunters tracking him down like some bloody wolves. Oh no, wolves! Or maybe Dracula will just blur out of nowhere and try and sink his comedy teeth into your soft bit. It's a big old game. Quite rulesy, quite long, but it's also a gloriously satisfying long-term war between a group of friends and a big bad who is fearsome when he's out of reach, but if you manage to corner him, you can batter him with the pointy end. If classic horror isn't your vibe, a similar game is Last Friday, where instead of Dracula, it's a legally distinct Jason Voorhees that is also a long, tense, and excellent war of attrition between heroes and one big bad. And speaking of the biggest bads, number two, Eldritch Horror. I mean, we're nerds, right? Gotta have at least one Cthulhu game on the list, haven't we? So let's shout out a game we haven't actually covered yet on No Rolls Bard, Eldritch Horror. Another co-op that sees plucky investigators going up against old gods with puny guns, Best of luck with that. It's kind of like Pandemic, but with Cthulhu, but not Pandemic, Reign of Cthulhu, keep up. There's a map of the world and a bunch of gateways are opening up to dimensions worse than Newcastle and New Jersey combined, pouring out monsters aplenty. Try meeting one of these smashed out on your bean on Collingwood Street on a Friday night. Each game, you'll decide which classic god you'll be going up against. Cthulhu, if you're basic. Azatoth, if you're feeling flirty. Yog sothoth if you're a hipster. Shabnagurath, if you vote Tory. And each ancient one will come coupled with three mysteries you need to solve. To do that, you'll be moving around the globe, finding clues, items, spells, suffering calamitous mythos events, and watching the Doom Counter move slowly down the track until it reaches zero and the Ancient One steps into our reality. And I guess you have to try punching it to death. F go for it. I prefer Mansions of Madness, but if you want a big, beefy board game with rich texture, lots of horrifying little nasties and no app to keep track of, Eldritch is for you. And number one, Nemesis. Call it a hot take if you must, but Alien is the greatest horror movie of all time. Facehuggers alone are responsible for 80% of my night terrors, and so it makes sense that Nemesis, a game which rips Alien off so enthusiastically and entirely, is the greatest horror game ever made. We've covered it in great detail in a Board Game Masterpieces video, so I won't say a lot more than that. But if you can afford it, there's no horror experience like Nemesis, the terrible tension of walking through corridors, never knowing if you're making enough noise to summon one of these sumptuously scary minis to join the party, the crushing difficulty of the combat, encouraging players to flee with alien baddies hot on their tails, the nightmare of the ship's self-destruct being activated by a ruthless player working to achieve their own dastardly end, and the sinking feeling in your chest that, oh no, you might just be infected with your own little passenger just waiting to say hello over dinner. Expensive as hell, for sure, but if you can find some chums to go in on this game with you, I cannot imagine a box I'd rather bring out over the spookiest and best time of the year than Nemesis. And yes, we will be playing it on Board Game Club in two weeks. 
promise. And that's our list. What are your favorite scary horror themed board games? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and share this video around on the internet if you enjoyed it. And subscribe to No Rolls Barred for more spooky board game content. Get on Boo.